Alright, today we're going to be looking at photographing an oil painting. Now, with an oil painting, uh, the artist never really conceives the idea of making a print. So what happens is the oil on the surface of the painting uh, could be reflective in some areas and non-reflective in others. So it's a, it's a challenge to uh, compensate for this. Now, what I have here is uh, roughly a four foot painting uh, by a foot and a half tall. So it's a, a very wide format. Okay, Because it's such a wide format, I'm probably going to lose a little bit of detail uh, because of the fact that um, you know I have to take in a wider piece. Usually if you're taking a skinnier piece with a uh, 18 to 200 millimeter lens, you get a lot more detail. So if you were doing this and had a little bit extra money, I would say that the D700 full frame camera with a 50 millimeter lens uh, should handle this very nicely. But um, since you know I want to run this series on an inexpensive budget, uh, I would say the D5000 with the 18 to 200 millimeter lens would do just great. Okay. Now, uh, if we look at the top here, we have a sheet. Okay, the sheet's whole job, see these fluorescent lights? Okay, yeah, and I got some weird mannequin heads <laughs> underneath there just to hold the sheet up there. Hey, we, get, we use makeshift stuff here. But the lights up here um, cast a forbidding light and cause the glare to appear. So what I did, I used that sheet as a diffusing agent for the light. Now, below it is this little lamp, okay? And in the lamp is just a fluorescent bulb. Fluorescents are real nice for this. Uh, they don't cast any harsh shadows whatsoever. They, and they tend to do the, a really nice job of like providing some really fill light to the situation. Now notice that the actual picture is on just a slight angle, so just a little angle there. Okay, and then the light is at a different angle, so light coming down, diffuse the sheet, hits the surface, light from the bottom applies up. Notice the camera is at a slight angle down to compensate for the same angle as the picture nearabouts. Okay. All this is essential for making all the reflections go away. What else? Well, since we're going to be losing detail a little bit, it's important to shoot in raw. Okay, it's important to shoot in raw all the time, in my opinion, but just in case, I'm going to switch this over to the ND filter so you can see this. Okay, to get to raw, you hit the I button down here below. Oh wait, no, not the I, sorry. The menu button. And then you go to the camera icon, which is over here. And you go to image quality and put it on raw. Make sure your white balance is set to auto. And your active lighting is set to auto. In the I menu, I'm going to turn on remote. Everything I do relating to taking prints or pictures of prints, uh, you cannot touch the camera when you take the picture. So the remote is not an option. Now, what do I want here? Well, the painting is at some weird angle, so I would highly recommend uh, an aperture that's kind of high. I would go f20, f22, and then if you crank this down to zero, you can see that compensates for the light in the room. So this is important right here. Make sure that's at zero. Again, to change the aperture, just in case, it's this button and rotate this and to get the shutter speed, it's just rotating this. Notice it changes all the time, so if 
by the time I actually line it up and everything, I'm probably going to end up changing it again. So I'm just going to back this camera up a little bit, put this thing in frame. And lightly tap the shutter button so it autofocus. Now, autofocus, very important. Not everybody's eye is perfect. So autofocus will help you uh, take pictures of prints. Don't try to wing it. Also, on the side of the camera, we have this VR feature. I always leave that off for this. And I always put it on normal, not active, because the piece isn't moving. Okay, as I said, this had changed a little bit, so. All right, I'm gonna take a shot. You see with that aperture as closed as it is, uh, it lets very little light into the camera. It takes a longer time to process and therefore a longer time to see the results of what I just did. Okay, usually I just hit the play button and then use the zoom feature to kind of look it over. Make sure all the rich blacks are there, especially in the areas of high gloss. You can see right here I have a, an area, well, you might be able to see it on the camera. I don't know if you can or not. I'll show you the piece live too. But over in this side here, I have an area of high gloss. Okay? Well, I'm going to adjust the lighting in the room, turn it down a little bit, and let that little tiny light at the bottom do its job. Okay. Now all the rich blacks are there. I'm going to adjust the filter here so that you can see in the dark a little bit better. Alright, so now all the lights are in, off in the room except for that little light here at the bottom. Got to adjust for the lighting for that. It wants time. I'm just not going to give it to it. So. Much longer exposure. So it's kind of a an adjustment of fill light here. You know, it's if you see something that's still glaring at you, it's best to have no lights except for the single lamp and have the single lamp at an angle pointing up. Again, much longer to process so you can see the results. play button and I'm just going to zoom in and you can see if you can see that turn on the other filter you can see the glare is gone absolutely gone all the blacks are very rich corner to corner and I'll show you this picture um, via live too where he wanted the sun to be in the picture was in the very exact center. So if I use that to my advantage um, and put the light right, so the light's right about here, 
pointing up on the picture, um, it, it gives this this in a natural glow for the painting too. It's kind of neat. All right, so there we go. That's how to make a copy of an oil painting. So, have enjoy, and on to the next video.